Alright, so this is the uh, far away view. This is our power. We go from zero to one. Uh, if we program the adult quick start, you hit adult for an adult, it'll give you a general set of settings. This panel here shows what the patient's actually being delivered. These are your alarms. This panel are the settings. These are the modes. This is your high pressure and low pressure alarms. Conserve O2, manual breath, control lock if you want to lock the panel down, up and down arrow keys. So, each one of these settings, inspiratory expiratory ratio as delivered to the patient. This is inspiratory expiration ratio that you have programmed. One to two seconds, they're receiving one to 1 1.5. So you're not getting what you actually want due to the patient not actually being hooked up. Um, tidal volume 599, we have it programmed for 550. So it's giving more air than what you have programmed because there's not a circuit hooked up. If we want to make a change, I'll highlight breaths per minute. It will blink. I will use my down arrow or up arrow, depending which way I want to go. Go to my number and hit the settings. So now I'm giving five breaths a minute. I want to go back up to 12 or 14. I hit it and it blinks. I go up on my arrows to my setting and then I'm at the number I want. That's how you set the program. All right, so I'm going to go through hooking this thing up to an actual patient. I'm going to try to remember the protocols off the top of my head. Adjust for uh, your patient. If you go to the hospital, you're just going to set up the, the uh, values that the hospital vent has. We have found with this ventilator that it is not providing the same air or oxygen to the patient with tidal volume and pressure as the hospital vent does. So generally we have to bump up our settings a little bit until the patient, if he's awake, can tell you that they're comfortable. This is usually the BiPAP, CPAP runs, um, but occasionally you may have an intubated person or a trach person on a vent uh, and they'll tell you if they feel like they can't breathe, you would up your settings. So we're going to turn it on. I believe our general protocol settings are for six milliliters of tidal volume per ideal body weight. We'll say the person's 100, 100 kilograms. They're intubated. We have our tubing end goes into the ET tube over here to the side. I just plug it in like so. You should see over here my lungs are starting to inflate which gives me some settings up here. So if my guy is 100 kilograms, then I want to go to my tidal volume, make it blink, go up to 600 to meet my proper rate, just like that. We're at 12 breaths a minute. One second in, two seconds out. This shows what I'm actually getting. So He's actually receiving 594, 583, so it's not exact for what you program, but it tries to get close. So our um, pressure here shows us our high and low. So it looks like we're maxing out at 23 for our peak inspiratory pressure. And at the bottom, we're somewhere around 5. So my high pressure alarm is set at 5. And I can set my high pressure alarm closer to what I'm actually getting for my patient, which should be somewhere around there. So 24, I'll go to 30. That gives me five centimeters of water difference from his average and re-hit my button. So now I know if there's a change in the patient's airway pressure based off of his average. He's getting 24. 23, 22, so I'm not getting close to my 30. Now let's say 
I kinked my tube. I instantly got high airway pressure alarm and low airway pressure. I don't know why I'm getting that one, but I got high air airway pressure alarm. When something goes wrong with your equipment and you can't immediately identify it, you're going to disconnect, use a BVM to breathe for the patient, troubleshoot your equipment, but you're going to help the patient first, get them oxygen, and then try to get them back on track with their hospital settings. The hospital has the settings to, uh, for the patient to reach a therapeutic end of some sort. They, they may have some acidosis, alkalosis, or uh, some sort of trauma to the lung, and they, the doctor and the respiratory therapist or anesthesia puts the patient on a certain setting, and that's what we try to match. Um, now I haven't hooked this up to an oxygen source, so you see we're only delivering 21% oxygen. So I'm going to take my drain hose in your ambulance. It's going to have a quick connect. I'm going to hook it to my bottle. Make sure my bottle's turned on. Looks like my bottle's empty. Should have checked my truck. Alright, so now that my bottle's on, see if I can up my I don't have it hooked to the bottle well, so that's why I'm getting a whistling sound from my O2 bottle. But that's 100% oxygen. That whistle's actually coming from the regulator on the bottle. So it looks like my regulator likes it around 70, 75% O2. That's just for demonstration purposes.